are back with another episode of the Youth Ministry Booster Podcast. My name is Zach Work, and hang out in the garage with my best friend, Chad Higgins. You know what, buddy? Uh, we've been doing this for a while. We've been doing this for so long that we should celebrate. So it's special today. Uh, my oldest, Isaiah, yeah. who basically started when we started. Like yes. That was one of the things that's true. Uh, Isaiah is the one that he... Uh, <laughs> He was born just a few months before we started podcasting, and uh, he's graduating the uh, fourth grade. But we're gonna be a third a graduating third grade. Gonna be a fourth grader. Fourth gonna grade. Gonna be a fourth grader. Uh, yeah. So, what you think wow. about that? Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. When yeah. we just started, he was an infant in the like just newly born. Yeah, like literally laying in the floor, kind of like every once. If you go back in the first fifteen episodes, you probably can hear him yeah. like cooing because he was like in the other room playing on his mat or in his playpen. And so stuff. we're we're coming up on nine years. It'll be nine years this fall. Yeah, man, coming up on nine years this fall. So pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff. So I'm excited for it. You excited for for more and what's ahead? Another summer of. Uh, yeah, another summer. Uh, it it always felt like in student ministry. I don't know if you felt this way, but there felt like there were always like the student ministry calendar is different, right? Like um, it isn't like a January to January calendar that we run on. Oftentimes things are marked by either the school year yep. or the summer, Summertime. depending on kind of what style. I Almost like what style of youth pastor are you? Like, are you <laughs> a school year youth pastor or, or a summer, summer to year? summer guy? No, and that's, and that's fair because everything in life should have seasons. It definitely is not a January to January, although sometimes our calendaring and budget reflect that. I know that for a lot of folks, summer is the, either the very beginning or the end of like the year, right? Yeah. Like whatever. If you're listening to this summer of 24, you're in it, right? Either you're coming out of it or going into it. And so I think for a lot of our friends, there's a lot of thinking about where they are, where they've been, what's coming next. Mm. And so in that spirit, we wanted to talk a little bit about new grades, new levels, new programs. But before we get into the big question of middle school versus high school, junior high, whatever, I wanted to hear a little bit about Junior high, Chad. I want to take us back in the way, way, way back machine. Tell me about junior high, middle school, Chad. Uh, junior high, middle school, Chad was trying to find himself. Okay. Like lost at the store? Or uh, like... <laughs> maybe. A ma man of too many hobbies? Or... <laughs> uh, middle, middle school, Chad was, uh, he was really for the first time in his life exploring new hairstyles. <laughs> Okay. So, <laughs> what was the uh, what was the old uh, so I was hairstyle of choice? I, I was moving Young Chadwick. I was moving from the bowl haircut. Oh, okay. I'm dating myself a little bit here. <laughs> you need to know the time frame. Okay. Um. So out, out of the bowl into the fire. Like what so, we... I was rolling from the the bowl haircut, which I had like the so I. Had, Big straight hair. Okay. But I did the like undercut bowl, oh, okay. right? So it like really flopped down. <laughs> um love a floppy bowl cut. But then I was transitioning into that spiky oh, uh okay. bleached look. Shut up. How have we not talked about so this? So I went a little I went bleached S tips for a minute. S okay, so did we just become best friends again? That was my big move at the end of ninth grade was mom frost my tips. Okay. And so she's like, I'm not paying salon store prices for it. <laughs> just so do it yourself. I had the at home shower cap kit mm. that you like pull on your head and then you like painfully pluck yeah. through the various areas that you want tipped, wipe, schmear, yeah. double, double cap, and then let it set in. Now, the dumb part for me is I was a blonde kid looking for blonder tips. So all it really gave me was like a more platinum blonde ringlet. Yeah, no, I, I went straight white. My, fir <laughs> my first run was also <laughs> self-done. <laughs> Uh, but it was not the shower cap at home. You know, it was not mom. It was me and my cousin. Amazing. With a Walmart sack and just chemicals. <laughs> so it it was what, there kit? was no there kit? was no there was no tip to it it was just 
the whole thing was going white. Wow. Okay. And so, yeah, we we whited out, which really was more of because we were swimming a lot that summer. Sure. Was more of an orangish color. Yes. Um, you chemical it enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was not a good look. So I went through that period of time. That was also the period of time where I was uh, trying. So I had a group of friends that was highly into like heavy metal music. So that was also the period of time where I was exploring all kinds of like heavy metal. So like it was this weird blend. How, how of, heavy are we talking? Oh, dude. I mean, the classics. We were very. God, there's going to be people maybe not listen to well, us. This is anymore. younger you. No, this is fine. You. You. This is this is pre Jesus. Yeah. So like Slipknot, oh. P- Pantera, like all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I resend the question. Right. <laughs> so uh, oh, wow. we were we were yeah. into the the heavy. Well, part yeah. of Slipknot's a Christian now. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks, Brian. Yeah. I, I don't know if you were expecting like. You know, Carmen or whatever. Uh, say, I was uh, hoping for maybe like Petra, uh, <laughs> no, no, Jars no, of Clay, Third Day, Conspiracy <laughs> Number Five. No, 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 that was not me in middle school. Okay, well, a boy can dream. Listen, the Mardell section had a real nice metalcore. I didn't know that existed back then. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Well, middle school Zach was really proud to be the president of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Amazing. The grand irony is it. I played on no teams. Uh, no teams at all. Not not. Bar- You're just looking for a good leadership role. <laughs> B- barely athletic. <laughs> definitely not athlete. Uh, but we had, you know, we had a popular election. And in the eighth grade, I was a popular Christian kid. And so I became the president of FCA and got to be a little mini youth pastor of eighth graders there in the, ah, dude, the I love pit it. amphitheater at Independence Middle School. So, yeah. Fellowship of Christian anyone. Just fellowship of Christian Athletes and artists, you know, just you know, band, you know, kid, band kids are welcome. I actually think that that is their motto. It's not just it's limited yeah, no, to, to, to athletes, right? It, it, but I think I was like one of the first. I think everybody else had been like also on the football team. You were the Christopher <laughs> Columbus. <laughs> I was just exploring new worlds, new worlds at the FCA mm. middle school. No, but it was really, basically it was just like the pre Wednesday morning devotional Bible study group. And yeah. we, sometimes we'd have guest youth pastors I love it. and share. And so no, it wasn't like we weren't like uh, uh deeply embedded in the life of like any one team or whatever. So it was fine. But it was but it was funny because like, you know, the guys before me were like, you know, baseball studs or right or football players and they were like this guy he's barely in band you're like our my leadership direction we're taking this away from <laughs> right. sports right right you guys like dodgeball that's pretty pretty sporty it's pretty sporty <laughs> well we want to talk today a little bit one of the things that we know that for a lot of folks in the summer can raise a question There's yeah what always, are you feeling what are you feeling uh hope we're hoping that this summer things are going really well yeah uh that camp whether it's about to happen or has just happened is a big win it's a big windfall it's a big wind in your sails like all the little things that we want to write home about sometimes that can get us maybe thinking or wanting or deciding to face down a big question youth ministry which is is it time Mm. is it time to split middle school and high school j high high like is is there a time to make a, a shift in the in the audience of the programming that we offer and so I wanted to unpack that a little bit because I think there's always some reasons to and reasons not to. And usually we don't always have the right folks to talk those through with. Mm. And so I wanted us to be a little bit of the wisdom board for maybe how like we could talk through this as a team of like, man, Chad, I had a great summer. Things are going really well. Should I? Is it time to? So maybe set us up a little bit, Higgins. I know that you've walked through this for a couple different churches. Like, what might get us to the place of feeling that way? Yeah. And then maybe what are some of the key questions that we should be asking? Yeah. So I think uh, I, I will say this first and foremost, because we always want to talk about maybe what what the youth minister may be feeling in these moments. Um, if the only reason that you are trying to split middle school, high school is because there's complaints, then I don't know that that is the only reason. Now, that may be a, a, a symptom of what's actually happening, um, but if it's just like, well, the only reason we're splitting is because parents are complaining, um, or a lot of times I think we, we get to this place because 
high school students are going, well, I don't want to just hang out with middle school students. Uh, because I think one of the things that you would share, Zach, is um, that there are there are uh, opportunities or things that you can engage with um, inside of your student ministry that could help in areas of reconnecting high school students, helping revitalize high school ministry without completely doing a separate like high school service or middle school service where those are two like almost completely different departments right. Right? Or, or a doubling of the efforts. Like that's yeah. one of the things like the first jump that people seem to always make is like, man, things are going good. Let's do a little high school biology mitosis. Let's divide the cell and double what we're doing. Yeah. But they would never say double like, Oh, we're going to split. It's not splitting. You're doubling. Yeah. If you're going to offer dedicated middle school or J high and high school programming, you aren't splitting your efforts. Yeah. You are doubling your yes. efforts. Please be ready for that. Yeah. Like, like this is not like, oh, we had a we had a full room. I'd love to cre- increase opportunity for capacity. Let's move things around. Right. Or like, man, the young kids do feel young. The juniors do seem bored. We should do it to help make it more age appropriate. Man, this needs to be like we are we are doubling our efforts because we believe we can double or better our ministry. Mm-hmm. Cuz clearly what's working right now, if you're feeling this way, you're probably feeling this way because something is working. So please don't change all that you're doing if it's already at some level working. And so what you're sharing that I would encourage is think creatively how to like maybe pick at some of those little edges. If you've got some really young sixth or seventh graders, maybe find some ways to pull them aside with a special fun, silly day to help give them that outlet. Or maybe you have those juniors and seniors that are too cool because they've been a part of the ministry for five or six years find ways to either give them more leadership in the large room or special time apart from it maybe maybe they help serve on the midweek and then they get your attention at chick-fil-a or taco bell after so that way there's a reward of like a closeness of maturity relationship and leadership without having a separate program that you have to staff with volunteers and efforts and teaching. You, I mean, you're literally going to burn yourself out twice as fast, however you're feeling right now. Yeah. So that would be the the first wisdom that I would give to anyone that's really contemplating and know that like, I'm actually, so I, I don't know where you stand on it. I actually do find myself in, in finding if you're able to pull it off and you have the facilities and those kind of things. Oh, you're pro. Okay. I, I am. <laughs> I, I, the, the benefit when, when you get to large enough to where you can create positive momentum in both middle school and high school, yeah, um, and you have the leadership capacity to run two different things and not, like you're talking about, it shouldn't be a split. Know that if you're moving into this, it creates twice the amount of volunteers. Yep. Um, it create it cost it costs more. To co- I mean, you're doing um, double, yep. And, and, uh, it, it takes more effort from from yeah. you, yeah, and and so uh, because you're you're if you're splitting middle school and high school, and then teaching the exact same message right. at both, right? Then it's you not really split. <laughs> it's not about then it's not about the learning capabilities of right. middle school high school. Like yes, it can be about the same topic yeah. and maybe primary scripture, but the way that it's taught needs to be very different. You should All prepare of these kind of things. differently. No, you should be preparing differently. The probably how like the organization of the time that you have, yeah. like the activity, the amount of time given to group time, the hangout time, maybe even the snacks. Right? Like maybe sure. high school gets different snacks or whatever. Like there's there's a different kind of programmatic thoughtfulness that needs to go into it. I, I want to hear, you're pro, you sound like you're pretty pro, so like at what level, you said if the things are happening and working, like how long do things need to feel like they're having momentum before you're like considering like yeah. making the move? So the, the first thing that I would really encourage anyone to do if, if this is where they believe their ministry needs to, to go, go. Um, is, to, uh, is to create specific spaces for individual grades okay before there's a programmatic shift okay so <clears throat> if you've got high school students that are wanting more of that autonomy and events that yeah. are specifically for high school 
before you start moving Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights into middle school, high, high school, school only or whatever, yeah. to create some events that are okay. high school only, middle school only, or, I mean, beforehand, you talked about a great idea of inviting high school students over to your house yeah. once a month for like a specific hangout yeah. or even or, or Bible study or whatever you want to do with them. Yeah. Yeah, give give them those little relational bits and see like and see if that continues to pick up steam. Like I think for me, like if you're feeling like man, this could be something, and those little experiments work well, yeah, then you may be ready or to do some overhaul. Like like innovation and the things that we've learned, whether doing this podcast or working with church leaders, like innovation should always start with really small iterations or prototypes. So instead of being like, hey guys, come Labor Day, we're splitting. You should spend probably a season or a year, yeah. maybe a year, of these little experimental efforts of the once a month high school Bible study or the leadership hang. Like there's just and maybe this is so I'm not I'm not anti. I'm not anti. I just I feel like one of the things that I've heard from youth ministry friends so much over the last couple of years is that they are exhausted. Sure. And this move, whether they're feeling the pressure from below because kids feel really young or above because kids feel too cool, um, it is, is the thing that like ultimately like breaks, snaps, because it's like they were doing a thing and instead of having like incremental more work because it was a busy summer season mm -hmm. or it was like the now weekend, like it is guaranteed more work every week without a guaranteed reward. And usually it's like, lower before it's better right like because yeah. that those first few weeks can be a real lull and so i would say at all costs protect the time that you're asking of the most number of people because it's the thing that will inflate and deflate you the most like if you have a, a high school senior high hangout and half of them come it's okay half of a smaller number doesn't feel as defeating but if you make a big move to split around how you're organizing your week on a weekly basis and things aren't working, that feels like weekly defeat. Sure. And that will run you <coughs> ragged. And so just here at Pastoral, again, I'm not against it, but I'm a little more leery of it than maybe some other folks might be. Yeah. Oh, I've just, I've seen it now twice done pretty well. Done well. well. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and so for, I'm 50, 50, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for me, I, you want you want to uh, to create some spaces that they experience what it's going to be like mm -hmm. in a one off environment, but then also that it's not just the environment. You need to have like an ongoing high school thing, yeah, over the summer yeah. or into the spring that you ask the question: Is this growing? Yeah, because if it's if it just splits and maintains, why did you split? That's right, That's right. right. And, and so this should be something that you move to to create their own space, to learn and grow, not only numerically but spiritually. Yeah. And so are we are we identifying how to how to uh, how do we measure those type of things? What are we looking for to know whether these are successful endeavors? Um, and then to be able to kind of push into them. The other thing that I would really recommend in this process, is that you're developing a leadership structure yeah. beyond what you have. Yep. If the goal is just, well, we need more leaders. Double the leaders, we'll call it good. <laughs> then, you're, then you're not building a leadership structure. Yeah. You're just getting a, a larger leader group. There's more folks for you to manage. Yes. Yeah, you don't just need more leaders, you need more layers. Correct. Like, whether that's staff, and usually for some folks, that's kind of the, like, way to key this up is, We've been growing in a way long enough that we're able to staff them differently. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's not a wrong kind of like if you don't have like either part time, full time staffing to redirect to these things or at least some like champion volunteers that are like, I will be all things middle school. You're probably not ready. Like you're yeah. going to have to remove in the same way that when your ministry grew from 12 kids to 20 kids to 40 kids you had less and less contact directly with students in relationship and you had more leaders involved. This is another yeah. notch up that's going to remove you further from the week to week connection yeah. with students. And the thing that I think is really important through any shift like this, and it's part of just growth in general in student ministry. I, 
the the higher capacity leader you are, I, the thing that I see to be true amongst all the leaders that I'm around is their ability to become more and more honest with themselves. Mm. To be able to say, okay, these are the areas that I'm actually strong at. Yeah. These are the areas that I'm not. And for most people, when we come into contact with either one of those, we either only want to focus on the strength yeah. or yeah. we only want to focus on the weakness. Yeah. This is going to help me because, yeah. I'm going to become better at this instead of realizing, okay, how am I actually wired? And then who do I need to bring in, even as paid staff or volunteer, yeah. to help in these areas? That's good. And so when, in, when it comes to, like, middle school ministry, sometimes in the division or the multiplication of a ministry, I see over and over again the head youth pastor moving into, well— I'll lead high school, and then we'll just go get a middle school guy. Just any old guy, yeah, yeah. And then oftentimes <laughs> in the, the the development of that, the middle school is kind of left at its own device yeah. instead of going, okay, I'm a really strong creator. Yeah. Like for you, Zach, right? Yeah. You are, man, you're innovative. Uh, you love the getting start excited. Things, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so for you being able to like, hone in, create, build, and then bring Wh in Whatever somebody. the new thing is. Yeah. And I think that's something to, to say. This isn't like preferring older and younger. I, I don't know. It may, maybe it's not true in your circles. It, it always seems to come true sometimes this time of year where like the reward of youth ministry's longevity is the, the joy of teaching high school students. Mm. But man, I have found that the ability to capture the attention of middle school students is the pipeline yep. for growing high school stuff. And so, like, the better you are at those sixth, seventh, eighth grade moments, connections, teachings, relationships, the easier you make it for high school. That most folks that really enjoy high school ministry are the benefactor yeah. of someone that was really good at J High ministry. Uh, and so, yeah, like, the, the thing that may surprise you in these this wave of momentum is how much those younger students actually need your attention more no. because that is such a determining factor for that high school ministry. And so, yeah, if this was the master plan was we'll split the ministry, I'll be the high school person or I'll be the person overseeing junior high and a high school person. You may be surprised to find yep. that the seventh grades need your attention the most. The other, the other big piece of wisdom that I've seen wreck this for folks and has also been some of the biggest hurdles that we had to overcome is this. A lot of times when these multiplication of a middle school, high school happens, we often think through it in the capabilities of ourself mm. or our volunteers um, instead of thinking about the people that it affects the most. Yes. Primarily parents parents yeah, yeah yeah um and and a lot of times in the division of this we'll we'll just stagger our time cuz that's when we're already around on yeah. Wednesday so then it's like middle school starts at 6 high school starts at 7 because we're going to run it back to back yeah, yeah. because we don't have the facilities right to to split rooms to split rooms we'll just extend the time extend the time and so then what we have is for parents and it's a lot of them who have both a middle school and a high school, yeah. then it makes pick up and drop off an absolute nightmare, nightmare for the people that, let's be honest, have the ear of our senior pastor. Yeah. And so now this new thing that we're trying to get off the ground. we're so excited about. Um, what your senior pastor is hearing is, I'm having to sit around and wait forever and all of these kind of things, and we're making logistical nightmares for families. Yeah. And so when we start to think through how do we divide this, there there are questions to ask and to try to figure out a solution to. Yeah. And so as you start to build this out, think through it from a parent perspective from the very first. Yeah. As much the logistics of getting there, getting home, setting up, tearing down, and for your volunteers as well. Like yep. how many of them depend on the child care or the opportunities to like share the burden of their small children if they're helping out. Like there's a lot that goes into it more than just what happens in the room. Yep. And I think that's one of the things 
there 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 is something true that a a gathered time a corporate worship a program time for teenagers is a important weekly or regular practice we we as our team would strongly encourage you to find regular habits of meeting together for for praise for teaching for small groups for activities for fellowship that all matters um, and age graded versions of that can be really beneficial it's why we have kids and youth and adult and mm. i think folks do things at different you know levels of separation or departments those can be beneficial but the thing that we would want to strongly encourage you friend is to think through not just the room and how we're going to do the things that we can control but maybe account for the things that impact others can't mm. control all of it but we can consider both our intent and our impact for the ways in which we are planning to do ministry really really well. We want the best for you. We want you to be excited about it. One of the things that I would say is to never make these big shifts lightly. Experiment, innovate, try things always, but big shifts in ministry should come with big seasons of prayer, big counsel of wisdom from folks that are stakeholders in this, and big rollouts for the communication of how you're going to share it. We were talking with somebody that was excited about it, and it was like in June of a couple years ago, getting ready for August. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, camp was great in June. I think we're going to do it in August. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. you're going to spring it on them? He's like, no, man, we'll have a couple months. And I was like, man, that's a big ask for a family unit. Mm-hmm. Like, this is something that should be like months and months in yep. advance. Like, they should be looking forward to it, counting down to it. I'll never forget his comment was, well, I don't even know if I'll be excited about it by then. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, that, that yeah. tells me a lot that if you wouldn't still be excited about making the shift in nine months, because it's really hard to undo. Yeah. So experiments, we can try, they can fail, we can move on. Big shifts in how we do ministry of where and when and for who, these are things that can really hobble things that are going well, especially if we're experiencing some of that goodness and momentum right yeah. now. The, the other thing, and I love what you're talking about of like timeline of rolling it out, because as you begin to talk about what you're going to do, you've got to have enough time to talk about why you're going to yes, do it. Yes, yes. And so to be able to start to cast vision first yeah. of the importance of both growth, caring for students better, um, and then explaining not just... Well, you got two times, yeah, yeah. But the amount of new leaders, double you're gonna up, be able double to, up, right? The the care that each student's going to get. Now you're actually talking to parents and students of why this is effective. Yeah, all of those kind of things. It also gives you enough time to really develop a great plan. Yeah, of rolling this out um, to to both your leaders, uh, recruiting leaders, getting them on board, all of that kind of stuff. Because you should have enough time with the new leaders to start developing relationships in your current model yeah. to be able to to then come into your new one. So you're not both in the midst of change and vision casting at the same time. Yeah. You can do those separately and then you start to develop relationships in the room. And now when everybody's going through the shift, you're not trying to build new relationships in the midst of the shift. Yeah. The other piece of that um, for us is this. Once you go to that shift in communication of it, you're not communicating, hey, we're going to try this. Yeah. Because the minute you start <laughs> communicating, hey, we're going to try, try this, this, yeah, then you're communicating, hey, I need everybody to put your evaluation cap on right. for the next year. Let me know what you think. <laughs> right. Because then you're going to get everybody's opinions. Yes. And then when everybody's trying to figure out whether they like it or not, you're going to have a good portion of people that do not like this. Right. With any change. Yep. And that's a necessity of, of making change is that people will not always right. like it. But to be able to roll in and go, here's why we're doing it and what you're doing it. And then internally with your staff and all of these, you can determine we're going to set we're guidelines. Committed. Yep. We're committed. And it may not be a forever commitment. It may be a trial period internally, but that trial period needs to look like 18 months, yeah, two, two years, year, three-year window. And it needs to be, you know, hey, 
Kids minister loves this. Senior yeah. pastor loves this. Young adult. Ev- everybody's excited. We're all excited about this because we've been talking about it, praying about it. We've sought wisdom both from, from staff and stakeholders yeah. for it. So, again, we are for it and excited for you. This is one of the questions that we see get asked a lot in this season and we wanted to offer as much wisdom as possible uh, in the excitement that you're feeling. I don't want to temper it. I don't want to bottle it. But I think sometimes every moment of excitement leads us to wanting to drum up more change or innovation to see what else is in store. Savor what's happening while it's happening. Evaluate why it might be that way and continue to invest in your students as you move forward. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, here at Youth Ministry Booster. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, Connect with us on social media. We would love to hear from you uh, and to be able to serve you and your church any way that we can.